Hello everybody, this is Jeff Olson with Danfoss Drives. Today I have a video for you that demonstrates how to view a VLT drive's fault log and associated data using MCT10 software. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Okay, so I have my Danfoss MCT10 software open here. Sitting next to me, I have a Danfoss VLT FC202 AquaDrive that has some alarms logged, and we're going to take a look at those alarms using this software tool. At this point, I'm going to connect the drive to my PC via the USB connection, and it will appear here in the network, which we see it did. This identifies it as a 202 drive. I'll expand that here, and I'm interested in this plugin right here. It's the alarm plugin. When I click this, it's going to go ahead and show the active fault log here and all information that is associated with that alarm. We can store 10 alarms here in the drive, and the latest or active fault is shown at the bottom, with the oldest one being the top. So let's take a look at one of these alarms here. We'll select the one in the middle and I'm going to go through these columns and explain what they are. First we have the time and date that the alarm was read. That will be the current time that you connect and read the fault log from the drive. The drive time is the amount of operating hours that the drive had on it at the time of the alarm. So in this example 828 hours. The code here, that's the actual alarm number. So this is an alarm 14 and it's described over here in the fault log text as an earth fault. This column here, value, the number in this column will actually have no relevance to an end user. However, if you were talking to tech support, they may request that value. The fault log time here is the same as the drive time with the exception that it's displayed in seconds rather than hours. If you divided this number by 3600, you would come up with the same number that's shown here uh, in the drive time. Then we have the alarm log date. If the real time clock on this drive was set, you would get an actual time and date stamp with the alarm. I did not have it set on the drive we're dealing with here, which is why we would get this generic date and time. This drive was running in a closed loop process control when this alarm happened. I was maintaining pressure, so here we see the set point at the time of the alarm, and that was 60 PSI. It'll also show us the feedback or actual pressure at the time of the alarm, 48.652. We can see here the alarm log process uh, control unit was PSI. The alarm log external reference at the time of the alarm was 0%. This would only be applicable for speed control applications where we are giving the drive an external reference signal. The frequency at the time of the alarm was 47.6 hertz. The motor current was 0.52 amps. The motor voltage was 86.7 volts. The DC link voltage was 337 volts. And we have these last two columns here, which are the alarm log control word and status word. These are 16-bit words that identify the nature that the drive was being controlled and actually values and data that was occurring when the alarm happened. You can learn more about the information that is in the control and status word by looking at the programming guide. So we can take a look at all that information along with the alarms and there's also one more tool in here that is useful. It's the service log. So I'm going to click this icon here now and it's going to ask us to read from the drive so we'll do that. This is only going to pull up critical alarms, so not every alarm that is logged in the fault log will show up in the service log, only critical alarms. I'm going to go ahead and select the same one that we've been looking at, the alarm 14, and we see here we have a bunch of traces that come up. So these are automatically graphed at the time the alarm occurs. There are actually 11 traces. We cannot change what is displayed here. That's predetermined. So we have 11 different traces here, and the values of all of these pieces of information are listed here. We can zoom in on this graph and take a closer look at what's happening. So this is all right here around the time of the alarm. And I can select this cursor tool here. And when I bring the cursor up and slide it over the data, if you see here on the upper right, all the values are changing to whatever they were at that point in time. 
So this can be a very useful tool in determining what caused an alarm to occur. Hopefully this is helpful and thanks for watching. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.